Welcome to Net Zero. I am Ved Sanyal. Prime Minister Jonas Kar Stor stated in his speech at COP26 that the Norwegian government has tightened its climate goals and promises to cut emissions by 55% by 2030, compared to 1990 levels. The government pledged to support investments that help to phase out coal and other fossil fuel sources of energy. Today, we are pleased to welcome to Net Zero, Kim Holmi. Kim is a senior advisor to the Norwegian Polar Institute in Tromsø, Norway, and a professor in environment and climate at UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. His research interests are within the fields of human-induced climate change and biogeochemical cycles. Welcome, Kim. How are you today? Just fine. I'm, I'm traveling, but uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Great. So, uh, should we now begin with the burning questions for today? Please. So the first question we have is, you have spoken about the extensive warming of the Arctic Sea and constant thinning of ice. Can you comment on the impact of this to the marine ecosystem and the food chain as of now? The Arctic is changing, is changing rapidly, and the uh, melting sea ice and the warmer water has altered the ecosystem. So the sea ice is different throughout the Arctic, much thinner, and many of the species that are dependent on sea ice are struggling or even uh, vanishing. So uh, the Arctic uh, has changed, is not like the Arctic I learned to know. And uh, painfully, we see that there will be more change in the coming decades, regardless of what we do. Many people are lobbying for an increased rate of ice melting in search of methane and other gas reserves. What are your thoughts on this? What kind of impacts can we anticipate when these gas reserves will be exposed? It will introduce more human activity in an already uh, troubled and fragile environment. So a lot of industrial activity in this already um, uh, fragile environment is certainly not something that uh, will be helpful for our ability to save at least some of it. That if we melt a little bit more ice, we will be able to burn even more. Uh, fossil fuels is a peculiar way of reasoning in my mind. Recently, Bill McGuire published a book that discussed the possibility that we might have crossed the point of no return. What would be your advice to policymakers and young climate activists about the actions that need to be taken to achieve net zero? Well, uh, there are still things to do. We have passed the point of no return is in some ways a, uh, a very negative narrative. Uh, there is future for us if we uh, join forces and work hard. Almost every time we talk about net zero uh, and, uh, and uh, ambitions like that, uh, people, focused on, on why it won't work and why we cannot uh, give up this or that. Um, we want a better life together such that all humans can have a dignified life. Yes, I, I think that's, that's very important um, of changing our view at this. So the ocean mirror effect is a geoengineering technology that uses specialized boats to create millions of small micro bubbles that can then reflect sunlight back into space. What are your thoughts on this technology as a solution to dealing with melting ice? What role do you think such technology should play in the upcoming discussions such as COP27? My personal point of view is one of uh, hesitance. Geoengineering requires human intervention. You and I must wake up every morning and put some bubbles in the ocean. And there are many uh, uh, reasons for that to fail. Somebody will come up with an economic argument. Uh, there might be war that doesn't allow for this. There is just simple forgetfulness. Geoengineering must not uh, become some uh, excuse 
to continue emitting. Uh, we'll fix it later when we then introduce something that humans must do every day from here on until eternity. Uh, we are creating a dangerous world. So now if we focus a little bit more on Norway from, from where you are, Prime Minister Jonas Karstor has pledged to tackle climate goals and cut emissions by 2030. What do you believe are the greatest challenges that he faces to achieve net zero? I think it's a mesh of short-term, long-term solutions, and it's a challenge to do things on the short term that appear meaningful and have the long-term solutions in your mind. So ability to take long-term decisions and be faithful to long-term decisions uh, is a challenge for our prime minister and for all of us. And, and that was our last question. So thank you for, for your time, for your perspectives and all your different views. Uh, because for me personally, they're, they're very enlightening. Well, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm uh, pleased that I have conveyed some thoughts to a young person, and I hope you can uh, maybe uh, modify them, make them better, and spread them further. Thank you so much once again, Kim. This is Veit Sanyal. I add my voice to the voices of my Net Zero International Youth Peers to monitor the action of our world leaders to achieve their net zero commitments. Together, we can achieve net zero.